Hi. At the end of the last module, we learned that we need to know the supply and demand conditions for a market in order to analyze price changes. In a later module, we will cover supply and then in another module, we will learn how demand and supply interact and how the price mechanism works. In this module, we will start to learn why individuals demand goods and what determines their demanded quantity. In this segment, we will learn about determinants of demand. With other words, what influences the quantity demanded by an individual or by a group? We will also learn about normal and inferior goods, as well as about substitutes and complementary goods. What do we mean when we say determinant of demand? A determinant of demand is actually a variable which influences demand in the one or in the other direction. Any variable can have one of the following three effects on demand. The first effect is a neutral effect. The variable has no effect on demand and therefore is not a determinant of demand. Here is an example. The result of the presidential elections will not influence demanded quantity for the good Pepsi Cola. No matter how many votes a specific candidate wins, the demand for Pepsi Cola would not change. Why should it? Therefore, presidential elections are not a determinant for Pepsi Cola demand. The second effect is a positive effect. In general, a positive determinant would increase demand when the variable itself increases. So the variable and demand are moving in the same direction. Here is an example. We use the market for ice cream. The higher the outside temperature, the higher the demand for ice cream. The temperature is a positive determinant for ice cream demand. If a variable has a negative effect on demand, it is called a negative determinant. The price is a negative determinant for almost all goods. For example, if the price for steak increases, consumers will eat less steaks. Please note, the price and the demand are moving in opposite directions. Therefore, it's called a negative effect. Again, the price increases, demand decreases. This effect can be strong or weak. I would like to give you an example for a weak effect. This example are cigarettes. When the price increases, the demand for cigarettes goes down. But given that most smokers are addicted to cigarettes, the effect will be weak. We will discuss this in more detail in Chapter 5 when we talk about price elasticity. On the next slide, I want you to write down some determinants of demand. Please point out for each of the determinants if they have a positive or negative effect. You can check your own behavior to get an idea. Write down your demand for the good upscale restaurant visits on the next slide. Please take the time to write down the determinants and hit submit. It will help you to understand the topic and to remember the determinants of demand better when you need them. For sure, I don't know what you have listed on the previous slides, but I hope some of your determinants for the demand for upscale restaurant visits will fit in one of the following categories. The first category or the first determinant of demand is the price. The price is the most important determinant of demand. The higher the price, the lower the demanded quantity. Therefore, it is a negative determinant. Second, income. For normal goods, income is a positive determinant of demand. Let us use the demand for visits of nice restaurants as an example. The higher a person's income, the more nice restaurant dinners the person would demand. Goods where the income effect is positive, like in the example, are called normal goods. There are exceptions where the income effect is negative. We call these goods inferior goods and we will introduce these goods on the next slide. A similar effect than the income effect is the wealth effect. For most goods, the effect is positive. For some goods, it is negative. 
usually wealthy people consume more. But some markets would suffer when consumers become more wealthy. For example, the demand for cheap wine would go down if people become more wealthy, because they can afford nicer wines. A very important effect is the price of related goods. This effect is sometimes positive, sometimes negative. For example, if we analyze the good Pepsi-Cola, the price increase of the related good Coca-Cola would increase the demand for Pepsi, because some customers would shift their demand from Coke to Pepsi. Therefore, the effect would be positive. A price increase of Coke leads to a demand increase of Pepsi. On the other hand, if we analyze the demand for lift tickets in ski or snowboard resorts, a related good would be snowboards. If the price for snowboards increases, the demand for lift tickets would go down because people buy less snowboards and therefore less people would buy lift tickets. In this case, the effect is negative. The price for snowboards goes up, the demand for lift tickets goes down. Taste is also a determinant of demand. Note that the word taste is meant here in a very broad sense. It's kind of a catch-all variable. Depending how the taste of consumers changes, the effect on demand can be positive or negative. Marketing tries hard to change our taste for certain goods to increase our demand for these goods. Expectations are actually the last determinants we want to cover here. Expectations are what we believe the future will bring. For example, when everybody expected that the US would be attacked with chemical weapons in the close future, the demand for duct tape skyrocketed. In economics, expectations about the market price are important. If we assume the price for gas will increase in the next few days, the demand of today for gas will increase too, because car drivers fill up their tank better today than tomorrow. On the other hand, if we assume the price will drop, car drivers will wait to fill up their tank and today's demand will decrease. You see that demand and the expected price move in the same direction. It is important to distinguish between the market price and the expected price. In this course, we will almost only discuss the market price, which is the price we can observe today. The expected price, in contrast, is what we believe what the price is tomorrow. Do the exercise on the next slide to find out if you understand what the difference is between the market price and the expected price. When we talked about what determines demand, Income was listed as an important determinant for the demand. Let us review the arguments. Income is for most goods a positive determinant. We call these goods normal goods. As an example, we use the demand for visits of nice restaurants. The higher a person's income, the more nice restaurant dinners will be demanded. It was also mentioned that inferior goods have a negative income effect. An increase in income leads to a lower demand. How could this be? I think an example can show the matter best. Regular supermarket noodles are usually very cheap. What are students with a small budget eating, especially when they like to spend their income on more exciting things than food? They eat noodles. Noodles with ketchup, ketchup with noodles, noodles without ketchup, or from time to time noodles a la plain. I guess you got the idea. What happens if a student's income increases? Maybe he or she found a well-paid job. Right. The student will eat something better than noodles and eat less noodles with a higher income. Bottom line, when the student's income increases, the demand for noodles goes down. The income effect is negative. Goods where the income effect is negative are called inferior goods. Other examples for inferior goods are the supermarket chain Food for Less, family restaurants opposed to upscale restaurants, or used cars opposed to new cars. 
take a piece of paper and try to write down the argument chain for these goods similar than we did it for noodles. This should be a good exercise to understand inferior goods. Here is another determinant which we want to analyze in more detail, the price of related goods. We found that the influence of prices of related goods is sometimes positive and sometimes negative. And we used examples to explain this fact. Remember, when we analyzed the good Pepsi-Cola, a price increase of the related good Coca-Cola would increase the demand for Pepsi. Therefore, the Coca-Cola price has a positive effect on the demand for Pepsi. What made Coca-Cola related good to Pepsi-Cola? The answer is, most people assume that the two goods are similar and that we therefore can substitute the one good with the other. This is the reason that these goods are called substitutes. In general, if the price of a substitute increases, the demand for the other good will increase too. The reason is that the demand shifts from the now more expensive good to the relatively less expensive good. What made the second example with the snowboards and the lift tickets different from the one we just discussed? Remember, when we analyzed the demand for lift tickets, a price increase for snowboards made the demand for lift tickets go down. The first difference is that the price effect is negative. A price increase of the related good, snowboards, will decrease the demand for lift tickets. The second difference is that the two goods are not substitutes. Just the opposite. Lift tickets and snowboards go together. They complement each other. Why they are called complementary goods. If one good becomes more expensive, consumers buy less of the good, in our example snowboards. Therefore, the demand of the complementary good goes down too. In our example, the demand for lift tickets. Bottom line, if the price of a complementary good increases, the demand of the other good goes down. The effect is negative. Find examples for substitutes and complementary goods and try to make your argument before you answer the following two questions. In this segment, we learned what influences the demand for a good. First component, price. The price is a negative determinant. If the price goes up, the demand for a good goes down. Second, income. For normal goods, the determinant is positive. For inferior goods, it is negative. We also learned what normal and inferior goods are and how we explain these effects. The next effect was the wealth effect. It is another determinant for demand and it is positive for most goods and in some cases it is negative. We learned how the price of related goods influences demand and we learned to distinguish between substitutes and complements. We also found out that taste is a determinant of demand because a change of taste will change the demand in the one or the other direction. And finally, we learned that expectations can influence demand. Please note that there is an important difference between the expected price of a good and its actual price, and that the first has a positive effect on demand, while the last has a negative effect on demand.